I said the king's in the building. Uh, 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 tell me how you feeling. Yeah, I said the king's in the building. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that uh, recently uh, just crossed my mind. Um, I don't know what it is about the holidays, but um, usually when the holidays come around, I tend to like reminisce on like, you know, experiences I've, I've dealt with in life. I, I just like to reflect during holidays. I'm, oh, and by the way, uh, uh, happy uh, belated July 4th to all of you and your family. Hopefully you spent it with family and friends, uh, stayed safe during this tough time. I just tend to think about life and, you know, experiences I've went through, kind of like self-analyze myself and think about things I could have done better or done differently. So yeah, um, going to go into a little story time here. I think uh, in life, like it's okay to give people a second chance, whether it's, you know, a friend, whether it's like a family member, or if you're going through a, a relationship. When you've been hurt, betrayed, or, you know, stabbed in the back by someone that you care about, you know, it, it's, it's hard to think that you could possibly give somebody another chance. Now, with, with me being a, an Italian, I've grown up with, you know, in a family where, you know, in our heritage, if you backstab us, you, you're dead to us. You don't get a second chance. But I'm not that type of person, y'all. Like, uh, I don't know. I just, I just try to see the good in people. And I believe, you know, we all make mistakes. You know, everybody makes mistakes, but, you know, <clears throat> you, you know, you do some stupid things when you're young uh, and you learn from them so you don't make those mistakes again. It's hard to imagine to give somebody a second chance, especially when they do something really bad to you. Like, I believe forgiveness is a value to, uh, you know, growth, like self-growth and human relationships. I think that like giving up on people because they let you down, uh, whether it's a you know a role model of yours like an athlete or uh like a i don't know like a celebrity figure or even maybe your best friend which i'm going to be talking about in this video um seems opposed to that in my opinion we all grew up you know everybody grows up being taught to uh, forgive and to give someone an opportunity to make up for what they've done in the past but um not everybody can really come to those terms which i understand you know, it's hard for some people to accept. But, uh, yeah, man. So, I'm going to talk about this one instance that I thought about recently and just kind of self-reflecting on this. And it's funny how life goes, man. Like, there, there's certain times... there. I, I do believe in certain instances where somebody screws you over so bad that there's, you know, no chance to make it up. But if the person's really sincere and they do mean a lot to you you should try to give them a second chance. In this story time, I'm gonna talk about my best friend. So, you know, we grew up uh, in the neighborhood together. Uh, I've known this kid since, uh, I'm not gonna give it, I'm not gonna mention any names just in case he's watching. But um, yeah, we grew up, we knew each other since the fifth grade, man. Known him since I was like nine, 10 years old. Grew up together, did everything together, hung out every day. Um, tried things for the first time, we even like, smoke pot for the first time you know we just you know did everything together um so yeah right around the time like we were graduating high school and about to go into college he got into really really some bad stuff um started dealing drugs his life at home wasn't that great you know what i'm saying like you know things were things were tough at home you know his parents are arguing every day uh had money issues there was tax issues within the house find the financials weren't looking so good for him and his family so at the time you know his parents were uh renting a house uh, a little three-bedroom house and uh yeah, man, they uh, they couldn't afford to pay the rent anymore. So he ended up getting evicted from his home. Literally, they gave him two weeks to move out. Uh, they didn't move out on time. And then the cop showed up to his door while his mom was home. And they were like, yo, you got to get out. <laughs> like, we've, gave you, we've given you two weeks. You were supposed to be out um, actually three days ago. So they came 17 days later and they're like, why are you still here? You're considered squatting at this point. 
So they proceeded to take everything out of the kid's house. Like, I swear to God, like, he left school early, like, in our senior year of high school. And I was like, yo, why do you got to leave? Because he was in a couple of my classes. And he was like, yo, they just took all my parents' threw it on, on, the, on the street. So I was like, he was like, I got to run home. I was like, uh, do you need anything? He was like, no, I'll call you later, though. I was like, okay. So, like I said, at the time, he was dealing drugs. He was, he was getting in trouble and stuff at school. Um, yeah, things weren't looking so good. Like, he had a... He had like a, a depression problem. They proceeded to take all of his stuff. I'm talking everything, like his computer, his PS, PS3 at the time, everything, man. Just threw it all on the ground. It started raining, bro. Like, it was bad. Like, all of his electronics got ruined from the rain. Um, he ended up having to take all of his stuff, rent a U-Haul truck to get all of his parents' stuff out, his stuff and his sister's stuff out. Uh, they moved to his grandmother's house, um, and it was small. It's a lot smaller than his old house, so, yeah, like, he was going through some stuff, bro. Like, I felt so bad, and him and his parents weren't getting along because they knew he was, you know, dealing drugs. Um, it wasn't no, like, hardcore drugs, but it was just, like, some pot. But, you know, they, they obviously didn't approve of it. Uh, even though the parents smoked as well and I remember like <laughs> like going with him to like steal his, his dad's stash one time but that's you know that's a story that's a topic for another time but um, yeah but they didn't want him dealing drugs obviously because you know it was against the law so yeah they, they picked up and moved into his grandmother's house it's only a two bedroom and there was four of them going to live with two other people so that's six people total in a two-bedroom house so yeah he was like yo like all my shit ruined i have like nothing left i just have some clothes bro like can i stay at your house for a couple weeks um and i'm like yeah that that's fine i, I got you. you you know you've done so much for me like like he's done so much for me in the past like when we were growing up helping me out the kid is the, the smartest human being i've ever come into contact with like, I'm not going to lie. He's helped me with, you know, getting through um, my classes. Like, this kid did not have to go to any classes, like, if he didn't want to. Like, the kid was so naturally gifted at school. Like, he's the type of person to, like, not sit in at any classes and then just show up for the test and just ace it. Like, the kid was, like, incredible. Like, you could learn so much from him. I would say he was, like, he's, like, a free spirit um, and just you know has an opinion for everything like he's one of those dudes that will always just like if he's in class like he'll be the one to like uh debate with the teacher you know yada 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 like you know it, it's cool it's cool having those people that um you know you get close with because like they they could definitely open you up to you know certain things in life and he's helped me out a lot with school he's uh he helped me get like one of my first jobs growing up so like i owed a lot to him so you know for me to take him in it was like the least i could do you know what i'm saying like he you know he, he was the homie you know growing up with him did everything together but um yeah man so i take him in and i had no idea at the time but he started doing some hard drugs um he was really tight on cash couldn't pay his cell phone bill couldn't pay his car payment so he had this little telemarketing job that you know he helped me get and we were working at the time so i let him in he stayed at my parents house for a couple weeks you know we you know gave him food and, and whatnot um everything because his the grandparents house was like way too small and plus he wasn't getting along with his mother and father he started doing some hard drugs like this is the time when he started getting into harder stuff like cocaine and uh yeah it was bad for a while he got he got really addicted to it he was still showing up to work every day on time and being like a functional drug addict you know there are, people can really do that he didn't let it affect his uh, work you know life but you know as soon as he clocked out it was like it was almost like a hundred to 140 dollar day habit man it was, it was bad so a week or so in i caught him blowing lines like in my parents house i was like yo what the f yo this has got to stop he was like yo this is like a one-time thing you know i promise i'll never do it again blah 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 he got so like shook 
that like I caught him doing it because he didn't want me to find out because um, he wasn't on the path to go to college because he just couldn't afford it and he didn't he didn't want financial aid so he was trying to get into a community college and at the time like I was doing okay in school and I was about to and this was we were going into the summer you know uh, leading up to my first year of college and he knew I was about to go away so you know he felt like really bad you know about it he apologized he said it was a one-time thing you know I, I really I'm really sorry I messed up I promise I'll never to do it do it again so then a day later uh, we show up to work we're about to clock out and he was like yo um, I gotta go uh, see my cousin real quick you know he you know he has like a medical emergency I'm like all right cool he's like bro I have no money for gas though and I need to go to this hospital which was like an hour or so away so I was like yeah I'll spot you money so I gave him 40 bucks for gas the next day he was like hey man I really got to pay this cell phone bill that I owe they're gonna shut my phone off so I was like all right you can't nobody can go without a phone like I got you so I so I gave him another hundred dollars and meanwhile I was just working like a minimum wage job I didn't really have that much money but you know I lived you know so I spotted him a hundred dollars the next day two or three days later after that I'd, I'd given the kid 140 150 dollars something like that i catch him again blowing lines in his car like right outside my parents house like late at night i was i woke up in the middle of the night and you know at the time he was sleeping on like an air bed we had set up for him i was like yo where is he so i look out my bedroom window he's got his light on in his car and i see him like bent over with like a straw in his nose and i'm like oh it again he comes back and I pretend to go to sleep and then I confront him about the issue like the next morning I was like yo you gotta get out before I get in trouble you know with my parents and the law or whatever the kid was just broken man like he broke down and cried I was like yo like I gave you another chance you know this is bad dude like so he ended up moving back to his grandmother's house while his parents were looking for another house um, a month or so goes by and I didn't talk to him because I was so mad you know what I'm saying like like I wanted to help him but at the same time like I couldn't jeopardize my future for him you know what I'm saying like I was about to go to college I didn't want to get in trouble and like driving around with him you know God forbid we got pulled over he had drugs in the car and then like I get thrown in jail and I could possibly lose I could possibly not go to college because of this because I'm in trouble with the law so yeah, man, so I don't talk to him for about a month. I finally go away to college after summer's over. I meet this girl, right? And my mistake, th this is uh, a tip for you you guys, like, going away to college for the first time. Uh, don't ever get a girlfriend your first year just because, like, your feelings will get hurt and thoughts are not loyal out there. You know, you y'all know what it is like. <laughs> so I get deeply involved with this one girl. Um, you know, I, I really liked her. I really f***ed with her a lot. Um, so, like, this is my, after we, I believe it was um, Thanksgiving break. I come home for the first time, you know, to see family, have Thanksgiving, celebrate the holiday and whatnot. And she had lived, like, a half hour away from me. So I was like, yo, can we see each other over the break? And she was like, yeah, absolutely. So we meet up, you know, I meet her parents and stuff. I go over there for, like, Thanksgiving dessert and and uh, we were pretty much in like a relationship, even though we didn't make it official, like we were seeing each other every day in college and on break. So, you know, she meant a lot to me at the time. And then I introduced her to my homie, who's going through all this stuff. You know, he's still working his telemarketing job, trying to get into a community college, but you know, it's, things are just still bad. You know, he still has this drug addiction. So, you know, we, uh, I, I introduced, you know her to him and then behind my back when i when i'm going to college um he's texting her and she's like behind my back and i had no idea you know she was like talking to him i found out later that she had one she said she was going to like a casino with her girlfriends or whatnot uh one particular weekend while we were upstate in college and i was like i thought nothing of it i was like all right it's like a girl's weekend cool i found out later 
she actually went home to visit him and they hooked up. You imagine finding that out later, bro? Like your best friend doing you dirty like that behind your back? You know, a little time goes by. Things weren't working out between me and her. Um, I wasn't getting the vibe that she was like 100% committed to me. And uh, she was the type of person to like flirt with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like we'd go to a party, she'd just start talking to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was always the center of attention. I felt a certain type of way, the way she would, like, go out with us in public, like, to parties and stuff, and, like, to bars. I played it off like it didn't bother me, but, you know, deep down inside, it did have an effect on me. And I was just like, I don't know if I could, like, really see myself with her for the future. So I was just having fun, you know, doing my thing. I did, like, I did let my feelings get, you know, for her um, to kind of affect me. But that's, you know, everybody goes through that when they're young, man. Especially when you're with somebody uh, for the, you know, she was like one of my first lovers. So, like, I took it serious, you know what I mean? So, you know, at the time, I had no idea she went to go see him. So, you know, a couple weeks later, you know, before finals started uh, for the first semester, I broke it off with her just because, like, you know, she was really dodgy with the text, you know what I'm saying? Like, she wasn't getting back to me, like, how she used to. And uh, I just suspected something was up. And so I just broke it off with her. I was like really hurt that she didn't want to try to make things up with me. You know, it, it really got to me, bro. And um, so we decided, you know, we'd maintain contact. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we were gonna still remain friends, which is cool. But you know, it is what it is. Especially because like we lived pretty close to each other at home. So Christmas break, me my boy and her like go see a movie or something like that and then um you know later that night after we all went home you know i go to sleep or whatnot and then you know like i usually do i wake up in the middle of the night and i just i don't know why but i just went to go look outside my window and i see these two raccoons fighting with each other the hell is going on like they're screaming like i woke up because these raccoons so i'm looking at these two raccoons fight over the garbage that's sitting on the side of my house and i, and I just thought nothing of it and then i look over to my right like by the tree that's in front of my house and i see my boy's car parked right outside the house i'm like what the is he doing here so i go outside and i shine a flashlight um just to see who it is and it's him with my ex in the car having sex with each other and i'm like oh hell no so i start running to the car ready to confront him he pulls his pants up and he dashed he did the dash man like he he sped out of there so fast tires screeching and everything oh i'm, I'm like hell no so I call him, I call her, they both have their phones off. I'm like, oh sh yo, like this, this, this dude did me like that? He was really seeing her this whole time? Is that the reason why she broke, like we broke it off? Like damn bro, like how could it be your own homie that does this to you? Right in front of your face, in front of your parents' house. Like, are you kidding me? That's the most foul sh I've ever, sh I've ever heard. He was dead to me at that point. I, I, I could never see an opportunity for him to make this up because I took you in when you when you got evicted from your house. I gave you money to support your drug habit, which I had no idea at the time. You lied to me so many damn times about what you were doing, what you were up to. And now my ex had the audacity to do this in front of my house. So I was like, F these two i will never speak to them again i was just so hurt and broke by that man it was, it was just a real tough time for me especially going through you know the stresses of life dealing with college and all that i'm like this is the last thing i need you know what i'm saying so i didn't talk to him for like a year or two i'm not gonna lie to you. And then i found out later that my ex developed a drug problem herself probably because of him and she ended up dropping out. Like, she didn't even make it to like second semester. So like, this dude is like, his own problems are bringing other people down. You know what I'm saying? Like, his problems are stemming to other people. And yeah, man, drugs are, drugs are terrible, bro. Like, they will rip you and tear you down. 
Like, it's not good. A year goes by, I don't even talk to him. Yeah, it was my birthday. It was my sophomore year of college. He calls me to wish me a happy birthday. I didn't answer, but he left me like a three minute long voicemail, bro. Like, he was just so down and broken. He was crying to me, he was like, Mike, I should have never done this. Like, you, you were my best friend. Uh, I will, I'm willing to do anything to repair a relationship, man. Like, I miss you, blah, blah, blah. Like, I should have never done that. She was a thought, you know, I, I thought to myself, like, I would, you know, I would never talk to him again. But at the same time, I could see him really, like, this really messed him up, you know, mentally that he did this. And he was still dealing with his drug issue. And I was just, I, I texted him back. I was like, I'm never talking to you again. Maybe we can, I was like, maybe, you know, we can sit down and talk to each other once you figure out this drug issue, man, because, you know, this, this is tearing you down, it's tearing me down, it's affecting everybody that you surround yourself with, and the fact that you couldn't, you know, stay out of the way, the fact that you were messing with some girl I really, really had an interest in, you know, that f***ed me up, bro, I'm not gonna lie, like, I, I don't see us really having any sort of relationship ever again with each other like what's you know that that's the most foul thing you could have ever done to me after all the shit I did for you so you know he's like okay I'm gonna seek help you know I'm, I'm willing to do anything for us you know uh, to fix the issue because I have nobody now like uh, my parents don't you know help me out anymore they, they don't love me anymore you know i have nobody i have no friends anymore like it's just like i, I don't know what to do and you know he was saying he was suicidal and shit. like i would never want anybody to kill themselves bro like over over some stupid shit, like drugs or you know or money issues and whatnot so i was like yo just go seek help like talk to somebody man talk to a therapist you know and then like Two, three months later, time goes by. He's like, hey man, I haven't done any drugs in like 60 days. I'm 60 days clean. Uh, you know, I, I, I went to a 30 day rehab program. Like I'm really trying to turn my life around and trying to get into college, man, because you know, I, I see what you're doing and you know, I, I, you know, I look up to you, man. Like, you know, I, I really wish I could do the same things. Uh, and he was like, I still believe that there's time that I can do that. And, you know, I was like, okay, we sat down and, uh, yeah, we talked it out. And, you know, at the time we were like that, he was like, we only saw each other for like a month. And then she cheated on me with somebody else from back home. And he was like, yeah, I was up from that too. Like I, I developed a connection with her just like you. And, uh, she me over too. And the crazy thing is we still talk to this day. Um, he really turned his life around. He hasn't touched drugs since for years, man. Like he, he smokes pot on occasion, but yeah, that's, that's nothing, bro. But, um, he ended up going to college. He ended up getting his degree. He ended up getting a master's and now he's a teacher at high school. Just, it's crazy how the world works like that. You know, he really turned his life around. He's helping kids now. Um, he does, he does like speeches at his school uh, you know, about deterring drug use and stuff like that. So he's like an advocate for, you know, staying clean and, you know, he, he does something he loves. He ended up doing something he loves. You don't, he doesn't work at that shit. A telemarketing job, long hours, just talking to people, getting hung up on all the time. He really turned his life around for the better, man. Like it's just, it's just crazy to see the potential in people, you know, and I just think giving people a second chance is is worth it. That that's my whole like outlook on this thing. So yeah, man. Um, I think it's important, you know, for like I said before in the beginning of my video, it helps people develop and helps people grow. You gotta see the good in people, man. That was my little story time. If y'all want more story times, drop a like on the video and comment um, something that uh, a topic that I should uh, cover, man. Uh, I know it's a little different from what I usually post, but you know, 2K is dry. I don't want to be gambling right now. Gambling King, it will be coming back in August. Don't think that I'm not. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, if, you, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like and share some of your experiences uh, with giving people a second chance, man. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, some personal experiences, y'all. 
All right, man. Until next time, I'm out, y'all. Peace. I said the king's in the building. <laughs> Tell me how you feeling. Yeah, I said the king's in the building. Uh, 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 uh. Tell me how you feeling. Yeah. Now I'm about to show them how to make it in America. She's a ugly Betty, all America forever, huh? Am I speaking clear enough?